In this video, we're going to solve equations with variables on both sides, including those with rational numbers. To start out, look at these example equations to see what we mean. In both equations, there are variables on the left side and the right side of the equal sign. So when that happens, there's a few steps that we want to follow. Starting by checking each side to see if there's anything that needs to be distributed or if there are any like terms on the same side of the equal sign that can be combined. After you've done that, then we can use our inverse operations to rearrange the equation. And what we want to do is collect the variables on one side of the equal sign. Then on the other side, you'll collect all of your constants. Then you'll solve, or in other words, you'll isolate the variable. Find the value that makes the equation true. As always, what you do to one side, do to the other to keep everything equal and balanced. So let's work through some examples. In this first equation, I have to decide if I want to collect my variables on the left or the right. So I have 3 and 5 tenths y and negative 1 and 5 tenths y. I prefer to collect my variables on the side where the coefficient is greater, so I'm going to move them to the left. I want to then cancel out the negative 1 and 5 tenths y. So I'm going to add 1 and 5 tenths y to both sides. So now I've canceled them from the right, and I have 5y is equal to 50. So let's undo the multiplication, divide both sides by 5, and I know now that y is equal to 10. But we're going to check to make sure that we solved correctly. We're going to substitute 10 for the variable in the original equation. So I'm writing my original equation, but every time I see y, I'm going to substitute 10. And let's work through to check. So on the left, when we multiply, we get 35 equals. Here on the right, I get negative 15 plus 50. So then negative 15 plus 50 is, in fact, 35. So we know because this is true that we solved correctly and y equals 10. So pause the video and try the example on the right. Here, when I want to decide which side to collect my variables, I know that 1 half k is larger than 1 fourth k. And right next to it, I'm just going to write that 1 half is actually two-fourths. I'm going to rewrite it giving it a common denominator with the fraction on the right. So now to collect my variables on the left, I'm going to remove or subtract 1 fourth k from both sides. So I want to cancel out this whole term from the right. So on the left, 2 fourths k minus 1 fourth k is just 1 fourth k minus 5 equals 7. So let's start solving for k. We'll add 5 to both sides. So now we have 1 fourth k is equal to 12. 1 fourth is being multiplied by k, so we need to divide both sides by 1 fourth. When we divide by a fraction, it is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal meaning we need to switch the numerator and the denominator. So the reciprocal of 1 fourth is just 4 over 1, or the whole number 4. So we know that k equals 48. Let's do a couple more. On this example, we need to start by distributing this 4 to both terms inside of parentheses. So I'm going to rewrite the left side. And then when I distribute the 4, I get 4 sevenths x minus 4. Okay, I'm going to collect my variables on the left since 5 sevenths is larger than 4 sevenths. So I want to cancel this term by subtracting 4 sevenths x. So that will cancel. 5 sevenths minus 4 sevenths leaves me with 1 seventh x minus 6 equals negative 4. We need to add 6 now to both sides. So 1 7th x equals 2. And then we need to divide by 1 over 7. So again, 
we're going to actually multiply by the reciprocal. The reciprocal of 1 7 is 7 over 1, or the whole number 7. So we know that x is 2 times 7, or 14. Feel free to pause it and try the example on the right. And now let's work through it. So we distribute this negative 2.5, or 2 and 5 tenths, first. So when we distribute, we have negative 2 and 5 tenths x, and then negative times, think of this as negative 10, is going to give me positive 25. Then I have negative 2 and 5 tenths x minus 25. So let's say I'll collect my variables on the left. So I'm going to add 2 and 5 tenths x to both sides. But something unique happens here, and that's where my variables actually cancel, not just on the right, but on the left, on both sides. So what I have left now, I have positive 25 on one side and negative 25 on the other. Because positive 25 is not actually equal to negative 25, and that is false, this means that this equation has no solution. All right, let's apply it here. We're going to write our own equation, but let's read through it first. This says the depth of Jackson's neighborhood pond is 33 feet and is expected to gain about one half foot of water each week. Paul's neighborhood pond has a depth of 45 feet and is expected to lose about one fourth foot of water each week. After how many weeks should the two ponds have the same depth? Okay, so let's define our variable. I'm going to choose W because we are looking for the number of weeks. And the number of weeks for what? We are looking for, I'm just gonna abbreviate here, Jackson's Pond to have the same amount of water as Paul's Neighborhood Pond. Sometimes writing it out in words helps me to see what I'm setting up and now I can go back and let's create an expression for Jackson's Pond. So what do we know about Jackson's Pond? Well, it's 33 feet and it's expected to gain one half foot of water each week. Let's write out what we just said. We said it's starting at 33 feet. Gaining means that we're adding one half foot of water each week. Well, we know the number of weeks is our variable and each suggests that it needs to be multiplied. So we're gonna write this as one half each week or times the number of weeks. Then for Paul's pond, we know his pond has a depth, a starting depth of 45 feet, and it is expected to not gain, but lose, so we're subtracting one fourth foot of water each week, minus one fourth foot of water each, I almost wrote an X, let's make that a W, each week. <laughs> okay, so let's start solving. I'm going to collect my variables on the left, so I'm going to add 1 fourth W to each side. So I have 33. 1 half is really the same as 2 fourths. So I know that when I add those fractions, I'll have 3 fourths W. I'm going to run out of room here, so let's move it over here. Okay, so now we need to subtract 33 from both sides. And here's where I'll write that we have 3 fourths W equals 45 minus 33, which is 12. 3 fourths is being multiplied by W, so our last step is to divide by 3 fourths. Okay, so I know that W equals 12 over 1 times, and instead of dividing by 3 fourths, multiply by the reciprocal of 4 thirds. So let's cross cancel since we can divide a 3 from both of these. 4 times 4 is 16, and 1 times 1 is 1, so that just gives us the whole number 16. And we were looking for the number of weeks, so we would say that after 16 weeks, Jackson and Paul's ponds will have the same amount of water.
One more. Feel free to pause it first and try this one yourself. Here it says the perimeter of the square and the equilateral, equilateral triangle shown are the same. Write an equation to represent the situation and solve for x. Okay, so the perimeter of this square, because it's a square, well, let's start here. We know the perimeter of the square is the same or equal to the perimeter of the triangle. And not just any triangle, but equilateral, meaning all three sides are the same length. Okay, so let's come up with an expression for the perimeter of the square. Because it's a square and all four of its sides are the same, I'm going to write this as 4 times one of the lengths. We know that that would give us the perimeter. Similarly, for the triangle, because all three of its lengths are the same, I can write its perimeter as 3 times one of the sides, or 2x minus 2. Both sides in our equation here need to be distributed. So first, let's distribute the 4 to each of these terms, which will give me 10x minus 12. On the other side, if I distribute my 3, I'll have 6x minus 6. So now we can collect our variables on the same side. I'm going to choose to collect them on the left. So I want to subtract 6x. Here, that leaves me with 4x minus 12 equals negative 6. Let's get rid of this minus 12 and do it by adding 12. So 4x equals positive 6. And the last step is to divide by 4. Okay, so we have x equals 6 over 4, which we can reduce or simplify that fraction to 3 over 2. Or we could write it as a decimal and say 1 and 5 tenths. All right, so you just solved equations with variables on both sides, including rational numbers. Awesome job and great work. If you want more practice, I'm going to show five questions on the next two slides. So feel free to pause the video on those slides if you would like to work through these.